Thanks, ladies. If you missed any scores or highlights from tonight's show, just head over to WNEP.com. Still plenty of highlights to get to, including our third and final Super 16 showdown of the night run. Couldn't wait for this one either. Western Wayne with just one loss this season. Head coach Randy Wolf says they're in great shape when their running game gets loose. Luke Janisowski with his first name. Well, his first name and his last name always has the end zone written all over it. Got to keep Lakeland's offense off the field, right? Packed house at Chapman Lake. 8-0 Lakeland versus a 7-1 Western Wayne team. Let's check out what happened. Lakeland strikes first. Dominique Spataro finds his favorite target, the tight end. Lakota Dupree, look at him go with the catch in the backfield. Muscles his way to the end zone to make it 7-0. Western Wayne came to play, though. Frankie LaShawn drops back and connects with the sophomore, Sean Owens. He's a veteran already, tying the game up at 7. Lakeland's next possession, Spataro this time. Oh, tip drill, but Dupree still coming down with it. Awesome focus for the first down. Lakeland ends up getting the end zone in a few plays later to make it 14-7. Seven. Western Wayne gets a turnover and they go right to work. LaShawn finds Owens in double coverage. Oh, it did him like that coming down with it. What a catch. Western Wayne misses the extra point. And Lakeland has a 14-13 lead. And then, yeah, you know who it is again. Spataro finds the end zone, takes a huge hit. They pull away in the fourth quarter. Lakeland wins 35 to 28. And so joining us now, the head coach of Lakeland, David Paworsik, after a big win. What did you guys do? What did Spataro do to find a way to help you guys pull away in the fourth quarter of this game? You know, it, it really, it's a team effort. Uh, Domenico is a great leader. Uh, he, he does everything we ask at quarterback, but he, what he really does is, you know, he, he, gets, he gets his guys on it and motivates them and, and he does a great job with uh, making sure the kids know what they're doing uh, when they're supposed to do it. Coach, you were really tested tonight. Western Wayne gave you all you can handle and your guys came out on top. How important was that for you guys to get tested and then play a close game like this? Because you know you're going to down the road in the postseason. It, you know, hats off to, to Western Wayne. They, they, did, they did a great job tonight. Um, but you know, again, it was, it was important for us to face some adversity and uh, you know, face that that test that we haven't had this year, and see what you know what our what our team is really made of. And and, and tonight they did a great job. Well, we can see what you were made of. Nine and zero. Thanks so much for joining us, Coach Borisic. Lakeland closes out the season against Mid Valley next week. So Absolutely. let's check out Thank you. Mifflinburg and Warrior Run. Let's head to those highlights. Mifflinburg ahead eight to nothing first quarter. It started out strong and it's still going strong after this 43 yard connection to Shot Grodeski. Sean, the senior Andrew Deal though with the second touchdown of the night to make it 14 to nothing. But don't count out the defenders running back Samuel Hall with the catch and the touchdown making it 14 seven. But it didn't take long for the Wildcats to answer back. Andrew Deal right here with his third touchdown of the night to make it 22 to seven. Mifflinburg in full control wins this one 35 to seven. Let's check out a major defensive battle between Hughesville and South Williamsport. South driving and look what happens here. Caden Harris gets the toss but he is stripped. Hughesville's Angelo Ferno gets the interception there to get things going. Hughesville did say they wanted to have some more turnovers and now they're playing hot potato here just three plays later. Luke Kaiser, oh, he's picked off by South. Ryan Casella, South will go on to turn the ball over on downs. So to overtime we go, both teams make a field goal in their first possession of OT. In the second OT, Hughesville's Luke Kaiser, Watch what happens. He's picked off by South Ethan Fields in the end zone. South will go on to score the winning touchdown and win 16 to 10. Turned out to be the game of the night. Muncie is one of just eight teams in the viewing area that came into the weekend undefeated. The only reason the Indians are not 8-0 is because they never found another opponent when Sarah dropped out. But tonight, they could get that eighth win as they played host to Northwest area. Hey, once upon a time, the Rangers were 4-0, but just 1-3 in their last four games. Well, they're about to be 1-4 because this was all Muncie tonight. Branson Iyer, the nine-yard touchdown pass to his cousin Ross Iyer. Then it's the Iyer to Iyer connection again. This time, 60 yards for the score, 13-0 Muncie. Still in the first quarter, Iyer this time tossing it back to Austin Johnson. He's got a different last name, but still the same reservation for six. Johnson ran wild in that second quarter. This time he goes 25 yards. Muncie piling on. They led 41-0 before they called off the dogs. Muncie wins 48-21. The Indians still undefeated with one game left in the regular season.
To Crispin Field we go in Berwick. The Bulldogs hosting the eighth ranked Crestwood Comets. First drive, it's Noah Schultz on the QB keeper. Along the near side, he takes it in for six. Comets soaring on the road. Berwick responds though, another QB. This time on a sneak, Matt Lachinski ties the game. But the Comets had the answers. Jaden Shedlock in particular had them all as Crestwood knocks off Berwick 56 to 21. Greater Nanticoke taking on Shimokin. Nanticoke trying to go to work early. The quarterback, Jaden Collins, from one yard out, takes it in. 7 to nothing. Greater Nanticoke. Then it became the Shimokin show. Artis Jones with a 10-yard run. Extra point, no good. Nanticoke still up 7-6. Shimokin, Brett Nile connects with Ryder Zuluski. Indians up 12 to 7. Shimokin wins this one 46 to 14. How about Palmerton and Tamaqua? First quarter action, first drive for Palmerton. It's Matt Mahalik calling his own number 23 yards for the touchdown, two point conversion, and it's 8 0. Tamaqua punting now, and it is blocked. Kendall Robinson. Palmerton's got great field position, and they will take advantage. Mahalik with the beautiful throw here to Cola Searfoss. 34 yard touchdown, 14 0 Blue Bombers. A big fourth down for Tamaqua. Luke Kane under pressure. Bo Staller turnover on downs there as Palmerton beats Tamaqua 36 to 20. Tri Valley looking to stay undefeated facing Marion Catholic just down the road in hometown. Third quarter 20 to 7. Bruce Hopek in trouble tries to make a play but Reese Hunsinger is there for the interception returns at 41 yards. A few plays later from the three Hunsinger takes it in himself 26 to 7 Bulldogs. More from that defense in Tri Valley a gang of Bulldogs sack Hopek. Marion has to punt again as Tri-Valley goes on to win this one 33 to 7. 